Deep in the coastal mountains of western Oregon, a regional branch line railroad does battle with a stiff 2.58% grade. The weapon of choice? Four-axle EMD locomotives. This is Portland and Western's Toledo Branch. This former Southern Pacific branch line serves a Georgia Pacific paper mill in Toledo, Oregon, where container board is manufactured for cardboard boxes. The westbound train coming toward the mill is known as the Toledo Hauler, while the eastbound move is referred to as the Patch, after it became routine for patch crews to take the hauler back east due to the slow track. It has also been nicknamed the Toledo Crawler for obvious reasons. Power for the train consists of mostly GP39s and GP40-2s, including one or two road slugs, which have no prime mover of their own. Trains leave the GP paper mill following the easy flow of the Aquita River for the first few hours. But the leisurely course comes to an abrupt end as the train crosses the Yaquita River on this wooden trestle near milepost 733. It's time to let those two-stroke 645s stretch their legs a bit. The engineer notches up the throttle as the diesels pass the milepost. The heavy four-plus mile grade to the summit has begun. After crossing the river, the grade doubles back just inside the timber on the uphill side of the old Ten Hampson lumber mill, which operated back in World War II. The EMDs have been just above idle for the past several hours and put on a fantastic smoke show as they start up the four-mile grade. Much of the Toledo branch is hidden in a natural tunnel of trees. Slip inside that tunnel and you have this.
Just around the curve is an impressive 265-foot trestle that rises 40 feet above a draw. This bridge is at milepost 732.2, just two-tenths of a mile below one of the former tunnels on the Toledo branch. Here is what the scene looks like from this grade level perspective. The railroad makes a curve to the right as it approaches the remains of Tunnel 23. This was the second of three tunnels on the Yaquina branch. This Southern Pacific photo from 1925 shows the east bore. The hanging cables or telltales in this image were to alert any brakemen on top of the cars of the approaching tunnel. Here is an undated view of the west bore of Tunnel 23. It was bypassed by the Southern Pacific during an ambitious line relocation project in 1962. The current line runs through the tall trees to the right of the tunnel. Hiking above the present grade, the top of the west bore can still be found like a cave partially hidden in the side of the mountain. An invisible river of cold air pours out of the dark interior. A reverse S-curve now detours trains around the nearly forgotten tunnel. Just above Tunnel 23, the mossy remains of two bypass trestles poke out of the ground. These were at milepost 731.56 and 731.48. Rather than filling in these trestles, the track was simply realigned around them. 
Looking down a draw, the patch climbs past the old trestles just out of view. One trestle that was not bypassed is at milepost 731.2. It is 210 feet long and 50 feet tall. Like many trestles on the line, this one likes to rock and roll. After rounding a curve, what railroaders call Big 60, the diesels emerge on the far side of the canyon near the former site of Tunnel 22. The train disappears into a cut through the older tree stand to the southeast. Hidden in the upper reaches of the canyon was once one of the grandest trestles on the Toledo branch. This was the 60th bridge constructed east of Yaquina, and it garnered the nickname Big 60. Reaching 409 feet across the canyon and standing 105 feet above Spildy Creek, Big 60 was an impressive structure. In September 1962, Southern Pacific undertook an extensive track improvement project in anticipation of much heavier trains with large chip cars servicing the new Georgia Pacific paper mill in Toledo. Those trains did indeed come, 
but not before SP made some track improvements, like more clearance in Tunnel 24, daylighting nearby Tunnel 22, and using its overburden to fill two trestles, including Big 60. The project took place in only six days between September 2nd and 7th, 1962. During that time, Morrison Newton moved approximately 198,000 cubic yards of earth from the mountain above Tunnel 22, filling the gap spanned by the trestle. This is what Big 60 looks like today. The fill at milepost 730.6 is overgrown with trees, appearing now as just another curve in the railroad's climb to summit. Empty gondolas with Willamette and Pacific markings are tacked onto the rear of today's train. They had delivered sections of newer rail for a track maintenance project on the line. As the train rolls out of Big 60, it passes through the remains of Tunnel 22. This view is looking west toward the Big 60 curve, hidden in the trees. And now we are looking east through the 1962 cut. This image shows the east bore of the tunnel as it looked in July of 1925. The photographer is standing just shy of Bridge 61, a 50-foot high trestle located at milepost 730. A westbound special excursion train has stopped near the east portal of Tunnel 22, with much of its train on the 220-foot long trestle. It had been shortened by the time this image was taken in 1962, just prior to the daylighting of the tunnel. Note milepost 730 is clearly visible in this image. In the spring of 2020, the milepost still marks the curve where the trestle used to be, as the eastbound Toledo Patch climbs through the daylighted tunnel.
One final bridge allows the narrow passage of the Nashville Summit Road near milepost 729. At track level, PNWR 2313 leads the patch towards Summit. In this winter scene, the 3001 nears the top of the grade at milepost 729. Trains break over the top of the coast range at an elevation of 704 feet. Summit was a regular stop on the Corvallis and Eastern at milepost 46.1. This 1913 photo shows the station, which included a Wells Fargo and telegraph office, plus a wooden platform to keep passengers out of the mud during the winter months. Besides the station, Summit had a post office and a few stores. When Southern Pacific took over in the summer of 1915, this became milepost 728.5. This image shows another pair of 12-wheelers led by Extra 2938, reaching the summit in 1944. Today, the depot and many of the old buildings are long gone, save the old store and gas station, which is now painted pink. On a hot August afternoon, the 3002 drags the patch job over the summit of the coast range 
and prepares for the 1.4% drop toward the Willamette Valley. You have been watching an excerpt from Portland and Western's Toledo Branch Part 1, available on DVD, high-definition Blu-ray, and 4K digital download with Vimeo On Demand. To order the complete program, visit 7ideaproductions.com. There is a link in the description below. Be sure to like and subscribe to watch more programs like this. From all of us at 7idea Productions, thanks for watching.